All right, greetings. Hope you're doing well. Um, so we have a problem, right? We have a ninety. We have a Honda Civic, nineteen ninety-seven, with a uh, window that will not wind up, right? So we're going to go through a full diagnostic. So some of this is applicable to your problem. Depends on how it fails. I don't know, but we'll cover everything. Here's the first thing. Uh, this is a window motor, and uh, I got this so you can kind of see how it works, right? And it's a regular motor, it's just two wires, right? And uh, because it's a DC motor, when you flip the polarity, the window goes, the motor turns one way, so that, think about it as going up, and then you flip the polarity, it goes down, right? So it's a real simple, simple, simple system. So take a look at this. This is the motor that, that drives the window, right? We're gonna mark it just to help you. Um, Keep track. Right. Okay. So we have uh, two leads, right, just connected to the connector right here, and we're just gonna we're gonna go. It doesn't matter. Just take a look right here. Right, we're gonna go. Positive and negative. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Like I said, um, we don't really care. We just want to watch that change. So we're going to put the red wire on the the negative. Is that correct? No, on the positive, and the black on the negative. See the motor turns t clockwise. I'm going to flip it around. Put the, put the black on the negative, and the red on the positive. See the motor turns the other way, right? Okay, so we know that that's simple basics for how a DC motor is going to work for a Honda Civic two wire two wire um, connection, right? Now, why is this useful to know? Well, if you're in a bind and your window goes down, you can't get it back up, right? I'm going to show you how to get the window back up, so you don't have to worry about uh, diagnosing it. And so the first thing you want to do is, uh, since you're dealing with uh, something electrical, you, you want to get a wiring diagram, right? And uh, depending on like how smart you are and uh, how aware you are of how the world works, you know, you're not going to do the poke and hope diagnostic or just pull things apart. Wiring diagrams exist for a reason. You got to use them. Okay? There's just no way around it. So all those mechanics that have told you like, oh, you don't need a wiring diagram or just go take a look at it. Okay, whatever, dude. All right, that's not reality. The world has changed. Okay, so here we go. So this is what we want to do. We want to gain familiarity with how the system is structured, right? So you can diagnose this. And uh, this is going to be uh, from all data repair. And let's take a look at, let's take a look at a, uh, what we have, right? Try to get this out of the glare as much as possible. Okay, so we have ourselves right here a um, this is going to be under the hood, right? And we have ourselves a fuse number 46, right? And this, this is a 40 amp fuse, and this is going to uh to the power windows. So if this fuse is blown, you're not getting any power to any of the windows. Now I don't have that problem, right? So we're just gonna, sh I'm gonna show you this because this is a full diagnostic video. They go from scratch, okay? So let's go ahead and find fuse number 46, right? So fuse number 46 underneath the dash is gonna be, there's a website called, uh, fuse box info if you don't have access to like an all data that kind of gives you information on fuel boxes uh, I'm sorry under fuse box okay all right. this is gonna be from all data right here what's up dude how you doing man right. yeah, yeah just working trying to diagnose this make a video all right all right okay so here we go oh, hey. sorry about that okay so this is from all data repair. This is the fuse box number 46. This fuse here is what we want, right? 
and uh, that's its location. So let's go ahead and find that fuse. Now remember, this is the most important thing about diagnosing um, electrical components that I've seen a lot of, you know, DIYers make. Is that they think they find a blown fuse and they replace the fuse and then it's fixed. It's not. If the fuse is blown, something is blowing the fuse. You have to find the thing that's blowing the fuse. Remember that. If you just replace the fuse and it works temporarily, you didn't fix it. Okay? So let's go ahead and find fuse 46 so I can show you. So this is the passenger side America. That's the fuse box. If you're, you are lucky enough, your Honda will still have the label in on it. So this is going to be the 40 amp fuse location, power window, pop that open. Okay, and that's the fuse right there. Okay, so this is going to, if this is, if this is fails, everything, there you'll have no windows whatsoever, that's working. I pulled it out for you, and uh, you can kind of see, just look down inside of here, and you can see if it's, uh, the fuse is blowing or not. And uh, you can use a multimeter and connect it across those two pins to check for continuity. If you have no continuity, then this is a blown fuse. Let's go ahead and put this back. Alright, so that's back. So the key's in the ignition. Let's put it in the on position. That's in the on position, right? The window should wind up. Let's verify we still have a functional window. Sorry, accessory. One more click. And that works. That works. This is the uh, passenger side rear. That works, right? That will not work. I disabled it completely. It only works in one direction. So we know we have a wire broken somewhere. Right, so next thing we want to do is look at the, uh, what happens? We're jumping between two different uh, wiring diagrams. This one is the interactive colored one. And uh, the other one is the o OEM. So let's talk about what's happening here. Now we know that we just checked this here. We saw that we have a functional intact 40 amp fuse that's under the hood, right? This here sends power to, if you follow that blue wire there, all right? So from here, follow that wire, went to here. All right, what we see is that it feeds a system it, when it closes so it's it's naturally open right here right and something has to close which is most, most likely the key position for this to complete the circuit right and then when it completes the circuit it powers fuse number 20 Let's see fuse 20 here fuse 20 fuse 20 and fuse 20 right powers all four of the windows so we know if we have all these windows here function i showed you except for one that means fuse 20 is functional right and uh what does that mean that means let's see let's take a look at this so we have so this is where it gets really interesting all right we have a um it's going to be a, a fuse 24, right? Which is a relay. And then you can see that that comes down and then it powers the power window relay, right? And then power window relay goes out to this ground point here, ground position 200. Okay, so 7A underneath. Underneath the dash, this is going to be in the fuse box that's under here. Okay. 
So let's take a look at that fuse box and see how it lays, how it's laid out. This is going to be good for fuse box info. They tend to have a really good, uh, okay, so here's fuse number 24. So you can get this information from fuse box, fuse dash box dot info dot info. That's the uh, URL, universal, Re universal resource locator. Okay, so that's position number 24. Right? All right. So we can go ahead and check that fuse right now and see if that fuse is functional. Shall we? Again, in our situation, we don't have to because all the other windows open. So we know that that fuse actually does work. I'm just showing you a full diagnostic so you can figure it out for yourself if this might be your source of the problem. The first thing I want to do here right, is make sense of this fuse box, the orientation, and uh, uh, this is what we're aiming for, 24, right here. But we got to get the orientation right, because it's not oriented like that. Right, so let's take a look at it. See it right here? This is the underhood fuse box. So this corner here is going to be that right there. All right, so we're looking. We're looking at the top row, third one in. And we're gonna check for continuity. To check for continuity, right? You wanna put your ohm meter in resistance mode. All right, now this would be enough right here if you just go ahead and touch these two together. Look at the screen right here. So we have open circuit, right? So we have a, a point, point 0.3 ohms as our 0.4 is our baseline. So whatever resistance we get, we have to subtract 0.3 and that's gonna give us our value. Now, if you have a multimeter, right, with, with that allows you to like hear something audible uh, when you are have when you have continuity, right, you most likely will have that. So you can hit that and then this is what will occur. So now you have continuity, right? Okay, the next thing we wanna do is find that fuse and check for continuity across it. Um, get you set up a little better. This is also really important. Uh, when we look at fuses, right, we need to know not only their position, but what their value should be. So this is gonna be position number 24. Oops. And uh, it's gonna be, uh, in a, it's gonna be a 7.5 amp uh, fuse. And uh, it's a power relay moonroof comma moon roof if you have a moon roof. I don't have a moon roof. So let's go ahead and find that fuse. It's gonna be 7.5 amps. It's good to know because often when people work on cars, uh, sloppy mechanics will just pull whatever fuse they want just to finish the job. So let's get it right. So multimeter, checking ohms in audio mode. Okay, so we want this 7.0 amp right here. Let's see if we have continuity across that, which we know we do. This is just for anyone that needs to know how to check this entire system from scratch. So we have continuity. So that fuse is intact. We're good. Moving on. All right, so next thing we got to do is uh, take the uh, panel off because we need to go right to the problem and see what we can figure out. We have a screw here. I think we might have to pull, yeah, we have to pull this off. All right. This has a little tab, like right in here. Kind of want to push it in, pull. Let's see, there you go. So that's that, let's see. Right there, right here. This is the power window switch. As you can see, it wasn't connected. I disconnected it because I needed to uh, just get the window functioning so I can keep keep moving. All right, so we're gonna run some tests on this. Right, so we're moving a little too fast. Um, okay, let's talk about it. We have a um, we got a wiring diagram for the uh, left rear window, right? That's going to be that right there. Looks 
a little blurry. Mm. Is that blurry? Yes, it is. Look at that's that's better. Okay, so if you follow that, right, we can see that there is a fuse. Fuse number. Oh, why is it so blurry? Okay, there you go. Fuse number seven. Okay, so that powers. It's a 20 amp fuse. It's so hard to focus here. Focus. Focus. There you go. It's a seven. It's fuse number seven, 20 amp fuse, right? And that fuse is located underneath the uh, kick panel, driver's side. So, that being said, right, what we want to do is go back and find our fuses. So if we're underneath the uh, kick panel, right? Fuse number seven is going to be a 20 amp left rear window motor. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to find that. Um, okay, fuse number seven is going to be at the bottom. All right, see it right here. And we're going to have to count. Let's count from here. We'll go from this large electrical component here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven up. Okay, and that's gonna be seven. Let's check for continuity there across that fuse. Okay, so let's do this. We're gonna go seven in. So we got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not me, that one. And it is 20 amps indeed. Uh, we can check for continuity before we pull it out. Let's do that. Either way, we're going to do both. So, Push your multimeter and resistance mode. Okay. Should have so little resistance that it's just going to beep. So right here. Okay, that's a good fuse, at least to the multimeter. Let's pull it out since. It's so specific to that one window. Let's make sure that we don't have any broken off legs or anything like that. Okay, so that fuse has all the legs. Okay, so we're good, right? We have a good fuse here. So we have all that we need to send power back to the window. Let's continue to uh, pull the panel off and make sense of the... Uh, <laughs> A wiring diagram that doesn't make sense. So we need to make sense of this switch. Right. Does this switch work? So we have to kind of figure it out. Right. So that's how that goes. Interesting. It's kind of fits into there. All right. Now we got to test this, right? And to test this, we got to make sense of what these pins do. When I push this way, that goes something, right? So this is going to be, um, let's see, window up, window down, okay? So down and then up. Let's figure this out, shall we? All right. Get you a better shot. We're going to put our multimeter in a... Yep, continuity. Put a make it beep. All right. It's gonna be a little weird to do without a nice little clamp. So let's yeah, let's get something to help us out. Alright, so according to the wiring diagram, right, we are looking at the uh, left yeah, okay. Left rear window motor, right? And we should have, if we look at the switch right here, right? The left rear switch, we should have a red and blue, a red wire with blue, and we'll have a red wire with yellow coming out of it to feed the actual motor itself. Because remember, the motor has two wires, right? So let's see. So over here, sure enough, we have a red 
with the blue, and we have a red with the yellow, right? And if you put power to the red and blue, right, the window will go um, close that circuit. Mm. This one gets a little tricky right here. I, hmm. All right, it should go down. Okay, that's what that means. So power to the red and blue will make the window go down. Let's go ahead and test it, shall we? I'm gonna show you what's going what you can do if you're in a bind and you are, um, you know, you need to get the window back up and it's 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 or down or vice versa. Okay, and if you're just a technician. Right? Gonna need these things are very useful. This is a, a T pin T pin collection. I'll put a link in the description. These are really great for diagnosing things. Okay, so I'll show you what we're gonna do with it. So we got one T pin, and we're gonna go in from the back. All right, we're gonna put another one in. I bent it so that way we don't get any um, shorts. We don't want them to touch each other. All right. Okay. So if we understand electricity correctly, right? When we put power and ground to one of these, so positive or negative, the window should go in one direction. It's going to be uh, blue with red with the blue will make the window go down. Red with the yellow will make the window go up. So let's, let's see if let's see if we know what we're doing. Right, so you grab a nine volt battery, grab some wires. Right, we have uh, the black on the negative, the red wire on the positive. Right, just put that down. Okay, so up here now, right, we're going to go ahead and put, oh, it's hard to do like this, but we're going to go throw the negative on here, just like that, right? And this window here should go down when we go like this. You ready? Sure enough, it's trying to move. Um, Put you down. Right, let's try this. The window needs a little bit of help. Okay, so. so that's it going down, right? Okay, let's switch the wires. We're gonna go the other way. So we're gonna switch the polarity. So if your window's stuck down, you need to get it up in a bind, right? Just go like this. And you want to help it out a little until it's shut. Okay. All right. So what do we? What we just did, right? We we under, What we just demonstrated is that we understand the, the circuitry. We understand that that motor is functional, right? So what we need to do now is see. For the most part, the circuit is intact. We need to figure out why it's not working in relationship to a wire. Which one is it not? Which one's not getting power, right? So something's not getting power. So it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. What we know, right, as I said to you, right, the window will go down. So let's go ahead and, and test this, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and uh, give this uh, some juice to go down from the uh, car itself. All right, so we're gonna reconnect the uh, switch itself. All right, and we're gonna try to operate this window with the switch. All right, so I have the key in the accessory mode, the key in the ignition. All right, let's see what this does. Okay, and that, <laughs> all right. So we know down is working. See that? Up does not work. So we have an issue on the upside. So we're making sense of these wires, okay. Now, on this wire here, right, this is gonna be your yellow and black wire. Oops, sorry. Okay, this yellow and black wire here, right, gets power from fuse number seven. We know fuse seven is intact. We know that the system will feed power to the system because the window goes down. So we have no brakes right now, but let's say you had a, a hunch that you think you might have a brake in this wire, right? Well, the wire that, that sends power to the, the switch, 
right, is going to be the yellow, yellow with the black. So that's going to be, uh, oops, sorry, uh, this wire here, all right? So you can check that wire and see if you have power by, uh, I'll show you, with the multimeter. Let's set up our next test. All right, we have the red. We want to use these leads here because it's a little easier to hold. So we have a back probe T-pin in the uh, yellow with a black wire. This should be hot, right? And because the key is in the on position and the accessory position, so when the key is in those two positions, this wire will be hot. So it should be hot right now. And then we have it connected right here. So the red from here through the wire is connected to the red on the multimeter, right? This is gonna go to ground uh, on the multimeter. So we already have the black here to the multimeter. Actually, this should probably go to the, the ground. Yeah, let's do that instead. We'll keep it less confusing. Okay, so let's pull that out. We're gonna just get a chassis ground. Hopefully this is a good ground, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, connect connect that to our multimeter. So let's see what we got here. Oops. Sorry, there you go. Okay, so now let's if everything goes well, right? We should see battery voltage right there, and there we go. We have battery voltage. See that? So it's 12.02. Again, let's put multimeter in volts DC. That's what that is. And we have 12 volts. So we know that that wire's good. Okay, so if you had an issue and you thought that the wire, let's say you had no power here at all, that'd be a good place to, to go to see if you have power coming into the switch. So we are moving on. I want to just be a little bit more um, clear with my descriptions here. I'm kind of like reading this wiring diagram like an amateur. And I want to be a little bit more professional. All right. So the you notice here that we have the yellow and black uh, focus. Yellow and black right here. Right. You see that number one. Right. That number one has to do with this position. This is the position, so that's position number one. So position number two, right here, will be a yellow and a green wire. Can you see that? Yellow and a green. A little hard to see, but we'll, there you go. So if we are aware of what we're doing, right, we can see that over here, position number two, oops, sorry. Position number two right here is a yellow and green wire. Okay, so that's how this works. You can like see the position of the wires on that switch, right? So let's talk about it. So yellow and green, right, pulls down to a ground when you close the circuit. That's what that does. And uh, over here, we know that this position, the red and blue wire, getting tangled up here. The, the red and blue wire here, right, is in position number three. Red and blue. So there we go. Position number three. It's going to be the middle one right here. That's the red with the blue, right? That This wire here works in tandem with this wire, the one next to it, position number two. So when you hit the switch, right, you get a closed circuit on these two right here, which causes the um, the window to go down. It pulls it down to ground right here. Now to go up, right, we need position number four, which is the red and yellow, right, right here. And that one is going to, uh, let's see right here, it says number five, yellow right here. That right there is going to be, gets, this is what pulls it down to ground. See that? And that's what causes it to close. So we need to, we know that this system works over here on this side, or we need to check this, these two right here. 
Okay, and we can verify our tests by looking at our known good functional system and see if that works. If that works, if the switch works here and the switch works from this test right here, we have continuity between these two pins, then we know the switch works, right? So let's go ahead and test the switch. So just get yourself familiar with the orientation of the switch. So we know we plugged it in like this. So that means uh, these two pins here are going to be the ones that that works for down. So if we have continuity when we when we do that, then we know that we have a function. We know that those two pins work, which we do. So we're just going to show. I'm just going to show you to test it. Remember how we put our multimeter in a continuity mode? We're going to make a beep. Okay. So got our connected on our ground what what would be our ground wire all the way over we have nothing there right so this, we're using a t-pin to kind of poke at it right so when we pull up we should hear a beep we should have a closed circuit or maybe it's a push down I don't know. let me see Thing. Okay. And then we get nothing. So either I don't understand what I'm doing. Let's just test, make sure this works. Yeah, that works. So do I not know what I'm doing? Oh, I see. Okay, so it looks like the that ground over there, I'm sorry, this ground over here works with the fourth pin. Yep, so, okay, so, it's gonna hold it there. See if there's any other pins that don't do anything. Nothing. Okay. So we're gonna push the switch this way and see what that does. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so as far as I can tell you that we have a functional switch. Because both directions, we have continuity. So when I push the switch up uh, this way, right, I end up with uh, the third pin. Third pin sending, uh, the third pin having continuity. Fourth pin doesn't do anything. Fifth pin doesn't do anything. When I pull up, right, the uh, fourth pin, fourth pin does something. So I have to think about this. I, um, I'm getting a little confused. I was surely thinking that the uh, these two would be active when I pull. I obviously don't understand, so I had to think about this some more. Okay. All right, so I'm, back. I'm literally confused for no reason whatsoever. I am actually correct. All right, let's talk about it. So, uh, if you look here, right, um, in position number three, right, we're going to have red and blue, and that one goes down. That's what that does, over and down, all right? And that needs continuity all the way through to position number um, uh, two, all right? Okay, so we, when we tested it, we realized that position number three and four on this switch, all right? Which is gonna be right here position oops so you get your there you go position number three and four were active so this one's gonna be down the other one's gonna be up this is gonna be a ground right and this one also number five over here is also a ground so either of these two right you're gonna have continuity between these pins are here when they are active, okay? So, 
It's a good test. We're reading it right. This is going to be power coming into the switch. All right. All right, so I got to be honest. I'm a little confused here. All right. So a quick refresher. Uh, this is going to be power coming in, right? And we know that position three and position four are the windows up and down. And position number one and number five over here should be the ground, right? So the only time I can figure out that the switch is actually working, right? So it's not working to my understanding, so that means I don't really fully understand it. Is uh, So for instance, I'm not pressing anything right now, okay? And you'll see I'll t I have the ground on uh, position number five, right? Which would be a ground. And we touch four, three, two, one. We get nothing, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and push down. So I'm going to push the switch downwards like this. Okay. So I'm pushing down. We'll start from the power. We should get nothing, which we don't. Position two, we get nothing. That's also a ground, right? <whistles> position three, we have something. So look, I'm going to put it on position three right here. And then I push power. Sorry. Now we have something, right? So we have a switch that works. I'm going to push it down again. Nothing. So it doesn't work. All right. Okay. So next thing we're going to do, right, is going to we're going to pull up on the switch. So we're pulling up on the switch. We have nothing on the power, which makes sense. The ground we do over here, though. See that? Okay. So now we have something on the ground. So I am, what I'm saying is that I'm a little confused. I don't really understand what's happening. I'm pushing down. If I pull up, pull up, let go. I just know that this does command the uh, the switch, but I don't understand why because it's not behaving the way that I think it should. So I'm going to leave that one alone. I know the switch does open and close the circuit because, as you can tell, it when I change position on the pins and go up and down, uh, it will turn on and off. Okay, so we know the switch works. I don't know if it works right, but it works. All right, so this is, uh, let's see, our next test. Okay. We know that the circuit, right, Okay we, okay, we have power. Power is fine. No issues with power. Get into the circuit. Right? At least that's what we think. No, no, we know. We know because we have power. We can we can trigger this. These wires are intact. We know that they have power because we can send power to them to make the window go up and down. So power side's good. Oh. This system gets grounded, right, through the power window master switch. That's going to be the one on the driver's side door, okay? And on that switch, right, if everything is right, and we know that, um, we know that the position number three, the red with the blue, uh, works, right, to complete a ground. So does that make sense? Mm. Something's missing from this side. I'm a little confused. <laughs> I had to think about this first. Let's, let me show you what we got. So I had to kind of conduct a test there, right? It's a little, I'm a little confused. Okay. So uh, let's get this out of the picture for now. Okay. So this is a known good ground. This is a known good power, right? When we put the two together, right, for multimeter and volts DC, 
right? You notice that when we touch these two here, we're going to get a uh, battery voltage. Okay. See, off, on. Sorry. Okay. So we're kind of draining the battery. Yeah. On point some stuff. All right. So the next thing, right, is a uh, if we were to take power and pass it to these wires here, we know one goes up, one goes down, right? Then we have hmm. Let's see. Just can do it instead of talk about it. Okay. There we go. Make sure these stay apart from each other because one's positive, one's a ground. I want to create a short. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna feed negative to uh, to the uh, to pin number three. Oops, sorry, shoot. Wrong one. Yeah, we're going to feed it to number three. So the window can't go up anymore, right? So let's go ahead and switch. I'm going to back probe the red and white wire. Red with the blue wire here. And then we're going to feed so the window's all the way up. We're going to feed pin number four power. I'm sorry, negative or ground. So it winds the window down, right? Okay. So <laughs> we understand how this works right here. I'm still struggling with trying to figure out where we are in relationship to what's happening on the ground side you know i don't know if like the my switch test i don't feel confident with um hmm i'll think about it for a second I'm a little bit confused uh, if you have any ideas definitely chime in now uh let's see uh i am so confused yeah <laughs> All right, we need to figure out why this circuit doesn't switch polarity. Oh my god. All right. So I put the switch back on, trying to test this. <laughs> No, it's not going down, so I must have blew the fuse. Fuse number 7, the 20 amp, so let's go check that. Let's see what we got here. Yep, that's definitely blown. I thought that was this. That was not... So. Let's go ahead and pull it out and see. It's when I touch the uh, wires together back there. Short circuit it real quick. All right. Um. Let's pull this out. Let's see what we have. Yep, sure did. Blown fuse. Let me get a new fuse and we can try to continue to test the circuit. Down in the back works, right? Up does up does not. Okay. So we go up here, right? This switch does nothing. It works the other windows. Right. But this switch does nothing. So what do we have here? We know that this does not do anything, so that's weird. 
Okay. Really? All right. All right, so what we have, let's talk about it. All right, so we're on the left rear window motor, right? Okay. We know that, we're checking, I'm checking continuity now, right? From the front switch. So this is the, uh, the power window master switch right on the driver's side. That's that right there. All right, that in position, so I've checked the wires, right? I've checked um, A14 all the way, which is actually a, um, a ground, right? And that goes all the way to where do we go? Okay, A14 here. So that goes to, um, A14 goes to, follow that wire, so position 14, and this is going to be a green and yellow, right, so that's this one here, that's this green wire here with the yellow, that's 14, position number 14, right, and that goes to number 5 in the back on the switch, which you know you know which one is that, okay? We have continuity there. I went to this wire. This wire is going to be position number two on the switch, right? And we go to position 16 on the main switch, right? And that is going to be a green wire. It's this wire here. So that wire has no continuity all the way to the back here. That's all I know, right? And uh, that might be the source of our problems. So let's chase that down. So we have two connectors in between. Uh, we have a, a C50, C556, and we have a C571. If we can figure out if we have, you know, what's the easiest one to get access to, we can go ahead and check and see if we have continuity from here to here. Just to let you know, the battery on the car is disconnected, so that way I don't have any um, weird readings with my continuity. So I'm going to try to find where these uh, connectors are, and then we can go from there. Follow and see if the wire is compromised. Are you ready for this? So I took the door panel off, right? Here's our, this is what we want. <laughs> Uh, okay, here we go. Take a look. This is such a common place for failure. So, I peel this back. You see that? This wire here is the wire we are looking for. It's completely gone. Completely disconnected. that. So we have to reconnect it. Oh, gosh. It's like the hardest place to work to. Alright. So here's our prize position, right? We have this connector. Not exactly easy to get at. Right? A whole lot of swearing. All that good stuff. So this comes out that way. Oh, this way. Sorry, this way, right? Then you have this one here. This has a connector on top. You got to push. You have to push that down and pull this way. Right? Truly a pain in the butt. We're gonna try to do a test and see if we are onto the right thing. So let me get that set up. So I got to reconnect some stuff. Right, so we peel back the wire a little bit here. Hard to see. And we used we used uh, this tool. Can't stress it's awesome, right? Because it's great. Because I had to go in like that and strip and pull. So I'll link to the description below for that one. Super cool. All right. That's too funny. So I'm fighting, trying to like reconnect this inside of there to that. And all I can do is just pull it out and 
connect it right there. All right, moving on. Okay. So here's the test. We've got the uh, green wire pierced. We've got our alligator clip connected. And the alligator clip on this side is connected to the wire right there. See that? All right, so if the diagnostic is right, this should work now. Let's, let's see. Let's give it a shot. So we got this connected back. Make sure that's connected. Right. And this is connected and jumped. We're going to put the key in. There's a moment of truth. Oops, wrong window. Alright, I'm gonna go that one. Come on. Nothing. Let's see, how about here? Maybe this has to be connected? One second. Alright, ready? Now that's connected. Let's see. That goes down. Yep, and that goes up. That's it. So that's the problem. Perfect. Okay, so now we know we've identified the issue. Now we gotta fix it. Alright, so we're back at it. So this is what I have in mind. You see where the connector goes into the door? We're not gonna try to connect this wire back to that. What we're gonna do, we're gonna just kind of like drill out a hole right here on the side of it. And then we're going to try to feed the wire through. And I think that should give us... Huh, put it like this. I think it's inevitable that this entire connector, all the wires here, are going to have to go through that hole eventually. Because, uh... It's just... The, this heart, the way that these cars are engineered... This wire here, right, that goes from the door through to the main body of the car, they always fail. This is why I went right here when I try to split the system in half to look for the broken wire. This is the most common place that they fail if you're looking for a broken wire between the door and some other component that the door controls. Uh, history has taught me that. and uh, So yeah, that's why I went to this connector right here. So let's go ahead and drill, kind of like, we're going to use a little, uh, not a drill, but you know, we're going to like, just kind of cut it out and see what we can do. Alright, so we're going to use this little reamer tool here. Let's try to cut a little piece out of this. bit off the side just enough to get the uh just enough to get the wire through yeah we'll do it at the bottom bottom side yeah let's yeah Should be enough to just kind of sneak the wire in through there. Let's go a little bit more. Just a, just a little bit. Do it. 
you see. Uh, well, hard to see them. Right in here. Just took out just a little bit right there. Maybe you can see a little better on this side. Uh, yeah. All right, you get the idea. So to cut a lot more out, just because of the way the connector fits, you can see that hole right there. Yeah, so that's how we're gonna do it. Just slide the wire through right here. Hopefully that'll work. I want to explain this a little bit. You've seen me do this before on the uh, video where I repaired the harness for the uh, vehicle speed sensor, but. Uh, so this is called a J-hook, right? All you do is you take... I'll pull it apart so you can see. Sorry there. Just take both wires, hook them like that, and then you twist them together and then you solder them together. And that's called a J-hook. Very strong. It's the best way to go about it. So we got the old uh, soldering. Here, the Haku soldering gun. That's amazing. It does what it's supposed to do. It's getting hot to temperature. It's so cool. Highly recommend it. I'll give you the uh, parts, uh, the number to get it. Part number to get from Amazon. Anyway, here you go. So this is what we have. We have some flux on the uh, J-hook. We're going to solder that together right now. Uh, why'd you zoom in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just like that. I just want to show you something about this. I don't want to damage the harness, right? So this is the wire that we just created. I, I mean, uh, attached and made it a little longer. And uh, I wish it was green, but it's not. Here's the green wire, right, that we want. I don't want to cut that wire permanently because I'm hoping somewhere in the future I'll do a better job. So what I'll do, i use these strippers, right? I'll go in here like this. Go as far away as you want as you can from the connector itself, right? It just gives you more flexibility in the future. All right, so that one won't work, right? Let's, let's try this one. You see that? That's all we wanted to do. Create a little gap like that, right? Then we're gonna go like this. Take this wire here, right? And we're just gonna wrap it around like here, like that. And then we're gonna solder this together. That's it. That way the harness stays intact and I could try to repair it later at a proper, properly at a, at a better time. All right, so that's it. Tapped in, soldered on and just, you know, covered. So we're gonna have to try to connect this connector back through there. What a pain in the butt. All right, so here we go. This is the window. Let's take a look, let's see. All right, so hey, thanks for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed that video and uh, hope it helped you understand a little bit about the window and how to diagnose it. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can add any additional information at the end. But anyway, thanks for hanging out. Uh, look, it works. Go down, up, down, yeah. So yeah, we, uh, it's a good one. A little difficult, but uh, I can, tell you that I'm pretty sure more wires will break over time just because of the age of the vehicle. Alright, talk to you later. See you next video.